Hey y'all, in this video, we are going to combine Shader Graph with VFX Graph. And in VFX Graph, have 3D meshes rendered to create a school of fish that will be swimming through a virtual ocean. So the first thing that we need is a fish. So if you have a fish model, an FBX, what have you, go ahead and bring it into Unity. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and or efficient, depending on how you want to look at it. And I'm going to create a cube using Pro Builder inside of Unity. And with that cube, I'm going to do a few adjustments, such as add an edge loop and basically get the shape of a fish here. So I may speed it up for a moment so I don't turn this into a Pro Builder tutorial. But by the end of it, we're going to have a very basic 3D fish shape and then we'll be able to continue. All right, so now that I've made a close enough approximation of a fish, I think, I'm going to go ahead and right click this and do Pro Builder Mesh Export. And we're gonna export this as just a straight up prefab just so I don't have the overhead associated with all of the Pro Builder features in here and all the vertices that I'll still be able to control. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this directly into fish intuitively named folder and call it the fish prefab and now we're good to go all right so now that i have this fish prefab i'm going to go ahead and take the cube out we are good here we have our nice prefab so i am very happy with this i'll go ahead and just throw a basic material onto this uh, for the time being We'll call it the fish material. All right, so now we have all of that made. So let's go ahead and create our shader graph. So I'm gonna go right click, create, come down to shader graph. We're gonna make, in this case, I'm going to make it a lit shader graph. And let's just see how things go. We're gonna call this the fish. And then if I double click on that, it's going to go ahead and open up shader graph for me. And now we can go ahead and come in here and do a few pretty important things. One of them being because we want to use this in VFX graph, I'm going to add support for VFX graph here. That's going to make it so that when we make our particle system using VFX graph, we can convert the output node to support using the shader. Uh, this is really important if you're using mesh in your output block instead of a particle sprite or something comparable. If you want an animated mesh and you wanted flying birds, uh, flying keys for the sake of keys chasing Harry Potter, as I've talked about doing that on my spare time, um, you need those to be animated using a shader like a vertex shader. Um, you can't really animate using a skinned mesh with timeline animation and then use that inside of VFX graph. So that's why we're kind of going through this is to give the fish some swimming animation. So let's go ahead and start. The first thing that I want to do is jump quickly back into my scene and just make sure that I know locally which direction is which. So this fish locally is from left to right or nose to tail is negative X to positive X. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the current position of the vertices or of the geometry. I'm going to change that into object. And then I'm going to come out into a split node. Now the split node might not seem intuitive here, but the reason that we're using it, despite it saying RGB and A for red, green, blue, and alpha is because RGB in this sense also means X, Y, and Z. And what I'm trying to do is to pull one of these axes out as the axes that I want to modify along. So I want that to be my X. So I'm going to pull X out and then I'm going to do an add node. I'm going to put this into add a because I intend to put the other half of the add down below. 
And then I'm going to want to animate this by time. So I'm going to go ahead and take time, multiply this out by an external facing variable that I can create right now through adding in a float. I'm going to call this fish speed. I'm going to drag that down, pull it up and to multiply. And then I'll go ahead and make that by default five. So now I can take this and I can add it to our position on the X axis and take all of this as the input of a sign node. Now you can see this sign node is moving from right to left on the X axis. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply this times another external facing float, which will be swim, we'll say uh, fish strength, just to keep our naming convention reasonable. Okay, and then I'm going to take that multiply. And now what I want to do is essentially modify going back into the scene, the vertices that I grab in a direction. So now which axis am I trying to modify in the direction of? That's going to be in the Y axis because it's up and down from here. So we're modifying along the X, but we're modifying in the direction of Y. So let's come back over into here. We'll grab a vector three. We'll make this a Y. And then let's grab the out, put this into one more add. And we're going to add this to the current location or the current position rather of the object space on the Y axis. So now I can take this, I can plug that directly into position. Go ahead and grab these and just unclutter the space just a little bit. One of the last things that we want to do here is change the fish strength from zero to let's just say five. And now we're going to actually see this modifying over here. Looks pretty good to me. So again, it's along the X axis, but we're going up and down in the Y. So now let's go ahead and save this out. I'm going to want the metallic to be up pretty high. We could make that an external value and maybe I, I go ahead and do that. So let's do float metallic setting, drag this out and pull that into metallic so that we give external control to the user. Let's save this out. We'll go over into our scene, make sure that our fish in its material is now set to shader graph and then fish. And now we have control over the speed, strength and metallic. And you can see that the strength is already a little intense. Nice, okay, so this is gonna be pretty solid. I'm gonna make this a metallic value of one for now. So the only thing is that we wanna flip this and have the sign going in the other direction, I think, because it looks like the head right now is following the tail. So there are a few ways to do that. One of the quick ways would just be to go back over here and make my fish speed negative five. And then hit play. And now it should drive from the other side. And I'm pretty happy with that. You could also go in and just fix it with inverting the value. But I think this is good enough for me for right now. So I'm happy with that. So the fish looks indeed as if it is swimming. If you go back into scene view, I know I've mentioned this in previous uh, tutorials, but you can go into always refresh here in the scene view to see it actually animating. And now we have our fish swimming. So I'm pretty pumped about that. I'm going to turn off always refresh because it's not efficient to keep that on. And now I want to do one or two more things. First thing that I want to do is go into window package manager and then come out into Pac-Man and let's grab inside of our project. 
in the high definition render pipeline inside of samples, I can then grab a water sample. So I'm going to go ahead and import this water sample here. Let me just make sure that you can see where I'm going right here. I'm going to hit import and now it's importing our water samples. This is going to be just so I can drop my fish into some water and make it look interesting without me having to set up the water myself. Though if you are wanting to set up a water scene, I have a video that will pop up in the corner right above me right now that will take you to how to do all of that in less than 15 minutes. So now our water scene is here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that, go into scenes. Let's do something kind of fun, maybe underwater. Let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to hit save just to save this out as a working fish. So you want to turn on a lot of these things that it is telling you that you need to turn on to get water set up. I'm going to skip through this just so that I don't waste a lot of y'all's time here. There we go. Now water is enabled. Wow. And you can see quite a lot happening under here. Now that water is enabled, I need to turn on water exclusion as well as decal layers, which is nice because as I click on this, you can see the correct item get highlighted over here. And then we need our volumetric clouds turned on as well. So really a pretty easy water setup and now we're underwater and I want my fish to be swimming around under here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we want to implement this. So what I want to do is come back out into my fish folder, right click, create and create a visual effect graph. And I'm going to call this, you guessed it, fish. If I open this up, I can then do a couple immediate things and there's a lot. We could turn this into an hour long tutorial, frankly. Um, one of the, the main things, and I'm just going to set this up as a simple kind of organic shaped particle system, is that you need this to be converted. And this is your output block. If you need the basics of the VFX graph, I'll have a video right above here that teach you kind of the basics. And I'm going to call this shader graph mesh. We can then hit the circle, grab our fish shader graph, which shows that it's lit. And then we can grab our fish geometry here. We have fish speed. We want that set to negative five and fish strength to, to 0.25 and the metallic to one for now, just to reflect that light for us. So now all of that's going to work. If this doesn't work and you don't see this block or that option, you want to go into edit preferences, Go into visual effects and then go into experimental operators and blocks and turn that on. Now, the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and just create a single burst of a spawn because we don't want these continuing to spawn in. We just want them to exist. I'm going to make it 64 for now so that we match our capacity of particles. So we're going to have 64 fish in the scene. And what I want to do is set an initial position. And I want to set this to a sphere just to get all of them set up, not on top of each other and spread across a sphere. Then what I want to do is I want to set velocity. And this velocity is something that I want to have a random float plug into. So I'm going to drag off from the left here and get a random float to plug into velocity. You can also right click create node and search for random float. And I'm going to not put this at zero to one, but instead 0.5 to one because it needs some amount of velocity. We don't want any fish just kind of sitting there. Then what we can do is set the scale just so that we have control. So I'm going to leave it at one, one, one for now, and then we'll modify the scale if we would like to from here. Then I'm going to come down into update particle. And from here, I want to say, okay, after you've initialized, you have your initial velocity. I then want you to set your velocity in the update function. 
and I'm going to want this to be a random vector three. And this just makes sure that it's applying to all three vectors, X, Y, and Z, versus up here, I'm setting all vectors to somewhere between 0.5 and 1. They're just two different ways of doing a very similar thing. I'm going to leave all of these at 0 to 1 to give them some organic traits. And then if we want, we could get into driving these over time. So I could actually say over time, I want the fish to behave differently. I can maybe cover that in a future tutorial just so this one isn't over a half hour long. But this should give me the functionality and the features that I'm looking for. Um, just for the sake of initial visualization, I'm going to put the scale actually down to 0.25 because I feel like my fish is pretty large for how this scene looks. Then I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back into my scene. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And let's go ahead and drag our fish particle effect in right here. Now we can see that there's something definitely wrong with our fish. They're not oriented along their tangent or along the vector of their velocity. So one of the last things that we want to do here is we want to make sure that we orient along velocity. And then let's hit control S, come back over into the scene, are still not in the correct place. So let's go ahead and come over here, hit play, and yes, they're still not oriented along the velocity the way that I want. So let's get a little bit more advanced. So one of the last things that we're going to do here is make a few orientation changes just because at the front end, I did not necessarily align Y up, um, which has set a couple things a little weird in our eventual particle effect, but we can easily fix that. So the first thing I did was rotate on the Y by 180 degrees to get the fish facing the direction that we want to be going. Then I put in an orient advanced node instead of an orient velocity node because I want to keep the fish vertically upright. So I want their z-axis to be pointed towards the upward y. And I want the x of the fish to be oriented on the velocity. So this is how you can essentially do an orient on velocity but also still control the other axes to keep the fish upright. And so in doing all of this, what we end up with in this scene is the following. So here is our school of fish. And now we can control them however we want. We can add in new velocity commands. Again, as I mentioned, we can over time change what they're doing. We can have them assemble into a, a sphere. We can have them all point in different orientations. So from here, it's really unlimited how we can control these. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.